Peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ and welcome to worship in person and online with Hey Good today. My name is Beth Givens. It's my Woodall and our praise and tech team, and we are so glad to have you here. If this is your first time with us today, there are um, connect cards over at our prayer table. You can scan a QR code, leave us your info, or you can write your information on the other side of it and place it in our offering bowl out in the lobby. We'd love to tell you a little bit more about Hey Good uh, via an email or a phone call. Printed copies of our weekly email, The Beacon, are available out in the lobby. They contain information about our ministries and other ways to connect, and our website is also a great source of information. In September, we are going to be doing a worship series called Prayer Rocks, discovering the possibilities that God has for us in prayer. Um, there is a 28-day um, uh, daily devotional that comes with that that we are encouraging everyone to get it's called dynamite prayer so that's an individual um, devotional for you you can reserve your copy by finding these forms out in the lobby or by clicking on the link in your email and letting us know that you would either like uh, us to get a copy or that you'd like to purchase it that you'll purchase it on your kindle um, and then also let us know if you'd be interested in a small group um, around that. So we hope you'll do that. We want to go ahead and order the books uh, this month because it's one of those bulk discount things, you know. The more you order, the more you save, and we're always into bargains around here. <clears throat> there are, again, forms out in the lobby and in the Beacon. Also in the beacon and the lobby is a summer update from our leadership board as well as information about collecting items this month for the Judeo-Christian Outreach Center or the JCOC. This morning we are continuing our summer worship series called Anything But Ordinary as we continue Jacob's journey. This time we find Jacob wrestling with God on the banks of a river. The irony is not lost on me that this morning I awoke to our U.S. women's national team wrestling with Sweden on the field and um, coming out disappointingly, so it's a, it's a day to talk about wrestling. <clears throat> As we prepare to move into worship, I invite you to center yourself in this space. As you inhale, breathe in the Holy Spirit, and as you exhale, let go of the wrestling matches that are happening in your life, in your head, and in your heart. Just breathe them out and hand them over to God for these next moments as we turn to God in worship. Friends, please remain seated for our invitation to worship. We gather here in anticipation, seeking an encounter with our holy God, who comes among us when we least expect it who invites us to wrestle with our questions and doubts, who richly blesses us and calls us each by name. Let us worship God together. Would you please stand as you are able as we sing our praise. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name The sun comes up It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song Your name is great and your heart is kind. For 
be your name in the land that is plentiful with streams of abundance flow blessed be your name Blessing. You may be seated. We'll invite our boys and girls to come up for a time with children.
everyone. I'm going to tuck myself right in the middle. How are you guys this morning? Pretty good. So it's been um, a couple weeks since um, we have been together, and what we are talking about this morning, or the person we're talking about, is still Jacob, the person we were talking about a couple weeks ago. Anybody remember anything about Jacob? What do you got? Jacob and Esau were twins. Anybody remember anything else? Anybody here when Miss Brittany was here and talked about Jacob um, being a little bit of a liar? Yeah, just remember that. And he was he was a he was a trickster, right? He tricked his brother Esau. Was he nice to his brother? No, he was not nice to his brother. He tricked his brother into giving him a blessing. You're exactly right. So today, Jacob is much older, about about 20 years have passed since we last met him, since he ran away from home, or actually since his parents sent him away from home because they were afraid Esau was going to kill him. So he is headed back to his home now, to his brother, doesn't know how Esau is going to is going to receive him. He's got his whole family. He's got all of these uh, cattle and camels. And like it's a whole big group that's traveling together back to his home. And Jacob is also running away from where he has been and where he met his wives. Because he, he, again, did I mention he, he's kind of a liar and a trickster and doesn't always make the right choices. So he made some bad choices back there too. So he's kind of stuck. Do you guys know what this is? An etch sketch, right? You guys, uh, any of you out in the congregation ever play with an etch sketch when you were kids? Yep. It's been around for a long time. So, do you all play with an etch sketch really well? Do you, do, are you really good at drawing on it? Uh, I'm, I'm lousy at drawing on it because somebody in the first service says because you can't ever make diagonals, right? And you can't ever, like, I always want it to curve and it, it oh, I kind of got it to curve there a little bit, right? Um, but my drawings usually end up looking really messy and really not a whole lot of anything. But what's the cool thing about the Etch-A-Sketch? You can, redo it. can you shake it for me? All right. And it all disappeared and we get to start again, right? So Jacob's life right now looks like a pretty bad drawing on an Etch-A-Sketch. And then he goes... One night to the bank of a river, and he meets somebody who wrestles with him. Who do you think Jacob might have wrestled with? God. That's right. And so when he wrestled with God, God kind of shook him up a little bit and erased all of that yucky stuff and gave him a new start. And what God gave him is our word on our crossword today. Um, it's this word. Can you guys, can any of you all read that word? Blessing. blessing. That's right. God gave him a blessing. He gave him a fresh start. He cleaned up all of Jacob's messy story and gave him a new name, Israel. Has anybody ever heard the word Israel before? Yeah. yeah. The country Israel. That's exactly right. Do you know anything else about Israel? The person, Jacob, who becomes Israel, who is the father of all of the tribes that will become the country Israel. Excellent. That's a pretty big blessing, right? So what we want to remember today is that when our lives get yicky and messy and our story looks like a not very good etch-a-sketch drawing, that if we ask God, God will help us shake it clean. Can we say a prayer about that? Would you guys like to, I'm looking for my microphone so I can ask one of you. There it is, it rolled away. So I can ask one of you to say amen. Can you put your praying hands together? And you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us. And that when our stories are messy, you can give us a new start. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. If you're going to Children's Church this morning, Miss Sarah is waiting right over there for you. If you are staying in worship, grab a seat with moms and dads, and they'll be back for communion.
Our scripture lesson for this morning comes from Genesis 32, verses 22 to 31. Some words of context. Jacob, who once fled his parents' home for fear of his brother's vengeance, has set out with his new family to return home. He seeks to reconcile with Esau, but has no idea whether his gesture will be met with an open hand or a closed fist. Even with fervent prayers and a rather substantial peace offering sent ahead to smooth the way, Jacob still worries. But now, in contradiction to the one who schemed to get his own way and fled to save his own skin, Jacob now acts with the well-being of others in mind. As the story opens, Jacob places his family in safety while he draws apart to face the night before his reunion alone. But it is not a night he will spend in solitude. The scripture lesson begins. Jacob got up during the night, took his two wives, his two women servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed the Jabbok River's shallow water. He took them and everything that belonged to him, and he helped them cross the river. But Jacob stayed apart by himself, and a man wrestled with him until dawn broke. When the man saw that he couldn't defeat Jacob, he grabbed Jacob's thigh and tore a muscle in Jacob's thigh as he wrestled with him. The man said, let me go because the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. He said to Jacob, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name won't be Jacob any longer, but Israel. Because you struggled with God and with men and won. Jacob also asked and said, tell me your name. But he said, why do you ask for my name? And he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel because I've seen God face to face and my life has been saved. The sun rose as Jacob passed Peniel, limping because of his thigh. For the word of God in scripture for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Join your hearts with mine in prayer. Come Holy Spirit, and as you met Jacob on the riverbank, so long ago. So meet us today. Meet us wherever we are wrestling in our minds or hearts and by the power of your word that Chris has read and the words that I speak and the meandering thoughts and feelings that will move through us. Transform us in this time that we might more closely resemble our Lord Jesus Christ. So when I was talking with the kids, I showed them an Etch-a-Sketch. How many of you still have an Etch-a-Sketch in your house? Confessions, I see a few back there. I see, I see a grandmother back there who still has one, mm -hmm. right? Um, classic toy, right? Been, been around for ages. Um, and I, I don't know about you, but as I told the kids, I was never really good at drawing pictures on it. It was just, it was, it just would drive me crazy and be a tangled jumble. And the thing was, like, you could get pretty far along and then with one little turn of the knob the wrong way, you were, you were toast. And you couldn't just erase that last little, you know, I, I like that thing on um, um, undo on a word processor, except, right, yeah, there's no undo on an Etch-a-Sketch for the last one. You just got to start all over again. You know, our lives turn out that way sometimes. And even though we know it doesn't do a whole lot of good just to keep turning the dials one way and another, we keep doing it. We think it's much harder to let God wipe things clean and give us a fresh start. And I think that one way we can look at Jacob's wrestling match today is that he finally stopped turning the knobs and trying to draw the picture of his life himself. And he started letting God do it. As you've heard, Jacob was returning home with his two wives and numerous slaves and possessions. It sounds like he might have turned a new leaf over and, and turned his life around a little bit. Except he's running away from Laban, the father of those two wives, whom he had tricked and deceived. 
and he's running toward his twin brother Esau, whom he'd also tricked and deceived. And the theme of the trickster has continued to define his life up until now. Jacob has sent messengers ahead earlier in this chapter to um, let Esau know that he's coming. And they come back with word that Esau is coming to greet him with 400 men. Jacob can't turn around because he's going to be punished if he goes back. And he doesn't know what his brother's greeting with 400 men might hold. And he's afraid it's going to be even worse punishment. Jacob has some issues to work out. Therapy was not a thing back then, so he sends his entire household ahead of him across the river Jabbok, and he also sends his extravagant reunion gift for his brother on ahead of him, and he stays behind, and he camps out on the riverbank that night. Not a bad form of therapy. There on the riverbank, he realizes how deep the mess is that he is in, how he must now confront all that he has tried to hide and avoid for so long. In verse 11, before this reading picks up, he asks God to save him from his brother Esau and to fulfill the promise that God had made to him years before in that dream that we talked about a few weeks ago, that he would be the father of a great nation. So we don't know a lot about the person that Jacob wrestles with that night. Did you notice that the scripture is deliberately vague? The person is not described, really. Uh, male pronouns are used, but there's not, you know, it was a tall person, it was a skinny person. It, it, we don't know what Jacob's opponent looked like. The opponent even refuses to give Jacob his name. But with Jacob, we know and believe that God had, has heard his cry for help. And it is God who has met him on the riverbank that night. And at Jacob's demand, God blesses him with a new name, Israel. The name means one who battles with God and with humans. But the name is more than that. It is also that salvation that Jacob has asked for. The new start. The clean slate. How does Jacob win a wrestling match with God? How does he get that clean slate? When I look at this encounter, I see at least three things that Jacob does that um, open him enough to God to let his slate be clean. The first thing he does is that he persists. Scripture says they wrestle all night long, and he refuses to let go. Kind of reminds me of how he grabbed his brother's heel in the womb as they were being born. He hangs on. He wrestles with his opponent until dawn. And in the same way, if we're going to be able to shake our slates clean, we have to be persistent and we have to stay in a relationship with God. We can't decide that someone or something else can help us more than God can help us. We have to be tenacious in our relationship with God. And the second thing that Jacob does during this whole encounter is that he admits his pain and brokenness. That's, that's how his night on the river starts, realizing how deeply in trouble he is and that he may not be able to buy his brother's forgiveness. Jacob's hip gets dislocated in the struggle on the riverbank. And, and after Jacob's hip is dislocated by his opponent, the opponent says, all right, let me go now, seeming to assume that Jacob cannot continue with a dislocated hip. Anybody ever had a dislocated hip? Everybody ever had a dislocated anything? Can you imagine continuing a wrestling match with a dislocated hip? And Jacob says, I will not let you go until you bless me. It's if he is saying, look, I am, I am wounded and hurt, but I am hanging on and I deserve a blessing here. So like Jacob, if we are going to get a clean slate, if we're going to erase the messy drawing that we've created, we have to be willing to admit that we're broken. Amen? We aren't perfect. We aren't superhuman. We all have our own faults, the things that we are ashamed to admit about ourselves, and, and we can't get a clean slate until we are willing to own up to them, to name them. The last thing that Jacob does 
in order to get a sl clean slate, I think, is that he is open to reconciliation. He recognizes that the stranger who wrestles with him is God, and he knows, he knows that his relationship with God has not been something to write home about up until now. He knows God has, has offered him, has promised him the world, and he still has not been living faithfully these last 20 years or so. And so he asks for a blessing. He asks for things to be set right. He asks for reconciliation. And when he finally reaches his long-lost brother the next day, Jacob discovers that not only were things set right with God on the riverbank, but also with his brother, because instead of meeting Jacob armed for battle, Esau embraces him and welcomes him home. All is forgiven. The slate is wiped clean. So Jacob's wrestling match with God offers us an example of how we might go about cleaning up the parts of our story that are a tangled and confused picture. Wherever we need a fresh start in our lives, we need to be persistent about asking for God's help, for God's grace and mercy. We have to be willing to admit that we're wounded and in pain because of this part of our story. We can't, we can't ignore how it hurts us. Finally, we have to be open to the possibility of doing things a new way, the possibility of reconciliation and turning our lives around. When we wrestle, when we struggle, when we dig into the ways that God invites us to change, we too will become blessed. The blessing that God gives Jacob is a new name, Israel. The name comes to represent a people a community of people who live as God's chosen people, the foreshadowing of our Christian community. And it's in this community that we bring our messy stories, our struggles, our fights, our wrestling. Like Jacob, at night we struggle. We reach a point in our own wrestling matches where we find ourselves breaking open and seeking the blessing of God. Then when the dawn breaks and we listen for God, we hear the whispered name, the new name, and we open ourselves to discovering life with all sorts of new opportunities. Today at the table, we will encounter God, the same God who wrestled with Jacob. In the bread and the cup, we will taste the new possibilities that are given to us by God's grace. And like Jacob, we will leave with the blessing of knowing that we are named and claimed by God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we turn now to the table and we think about how our gifts make a difference, we give thanks for the ways that Hey Good offers opportunities for fresh starts through all of our ministries. And today, I want to particularly lift up our prayer ministry and those who are part of that prayer ministry, the faithful people who are in the business of praying for all of us here and for beyond our community as well, praying for new beginnings that come from healing and new jobs and new relationships and other things. Our prayer ministry takes seriously the transformative power of God's grace. And your gifts make a difference. You make that prayer ministry possible. You may give um, to Hey Good online. You may give in the offering bowl that is out in the lobby. Or you may give by mailing a check to the church. Um, a couple of congregational um, concerns to share this morning for you to um, be holding in prayer. Um, first, that um, Lori Miklachuk's dad, Robert, is still in the hospital. Um, uh, Mary DeRisi, who teaches at, um, at this service, our kids, and so we want to keep them in our prayers. Um, and um, for Christy and Randy Carlson, Christy's dad died this morning, and that's why they're not here. So we want to hold them in our prayers as well. Will you join your hearts with mine in prayer? God, for all in our congregation who are hurting and grieving, we ask for your healing, your presence, your comfort, for new starts. We especially lift up to you Robert and his family, and Christy and Randy and their family. Be with them 
strengthen them to hold them. Amen. This morning, we respond to God's word by sharing together in Holy Communion. We are going to have two stations at the front of the center aisle. You are invited to come forward by the center aisle and to extend your hands. You can send them in the shape of a cross or a manger, whatever your metaphor is that you like, um, so that the servers can place a piece of bread in them. Then we invite you to um, choose. Once you have your bread, <laughs> you can either dip it in the chalice um, your bread, not your fingers, um, consuming communion by the method of intinction, or you can take a small cup from the tray that will be offered to you and consume the juice that way. Um, if you need gluten-free communion, it will be um, available. Just let the bread server know, and the gluten-free communion is here on the table. Um, I'm really worried it's going to set this napkin on Always be mindful of fire hazards. <coughs> um, you can um, consume communion up front or in your seats, and there are uh, trash cans available if you use the plastic cups and want to throw those away. As we prepare to gather at this table, we remember that this is Christ's table and Christ is the host. And so all are welcome. It doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are, where you are in your walk with Christ, um, whether you're feeling um, worthy or not, all are worthy to receive the gifts of grace that we find at this table. Will you join with me, your hearts in prayer, over these gifts? It is a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God. You created the heavens and the earth and all that we know. You're setting the world into motion with your breath and giving us the breath of life. And like Jacob, we have turned away many times. We have um, become tricksters. We have abandoned you throughout the history of your people. And yet your love for us is persistent and consistent. You spoke to us through your prophets. You came to us through still, small voices. And so we praise your name and your care for us over all of these years. And one day, one day you sent Jesus to us. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to, to release people who were captive, to give sight to those who were blinded, and, and set at liberty those who were oppressed. And he announced that the time would come when you, the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, your church was born, delivered from slavery to sin and death, and offered a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And we remember that on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he gathered at table with his friends, and he took bread, and he gave thanks to you, and he blessed it, and he said, take, eat, for this is my body, which is given to all of you. And then he got the cup after supper and he gave thanks to you and he shared it with them and said drink from this all of you this is my blood a, a new covenant given for you do this in remembrance of me and so today in remembrance as he has asked us we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's sacrifice for us Pour out your Holy Spirit gathered on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by that same Spirit, unite us who are so different and so diverse into one body with Christ. To one body with one another. To one ministry in the hurting world. Until that day when Christ does come in final victory and we feast at his eternal banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And the whole church says, amen. And now will you join me with the confidence of children of God and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. for we all share in the one loaf. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The table is ready. Let us keep the feast. I'll invite those who are servers to come forward, and then the band will be coming first to receive. of our servers and she's going to be coming back in and she wants to invite us back in. Abraham, we got a covenant of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven that you do what you say.
pray with me? Oh God, great has your faithfulness been at this table. In these mysterious gifts of bread and cup, we have received you. And we are strengthened by you to move into the world to share your love with others. Help us be your light in the darkness by the power of these gifts at work in us. Amen. Let me invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our response and commitment. Both. I was blind, now I'm seeing in color. I was dead, now I'm living forever. I'd failed, but you were my redeemer. I've been blessed beyond all. Let me see. 